Hi, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that I'm a bit of a fan of the Global Vision line of lenses from Sigma, specifically the A or Art Series line or the S, the Sports Series line. I've yet to try out a C for contemporary, and I'm not even sure what contemporary means as far as lenses go anyway. And it seems that with each new addition to the art line, the level of hype and anticipation for Sigma to deliver yet again gets even greater and greater, which leads us to today. This is just the latest Sigma Art Series lens that has been hyped to the point where you have to wonder if this thing could ever possibly live up to the lofty expectations that have been set for it. This is the Sigma 85mm f1.4, and the praise has just been poured onto this thing like fatty cream into a Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks coffee. Comparisons of grandeur, like this thing is as amazingly sharp as the Otis 85mm f1.4 from Zeiss, or oh my god, my eyes are bleeding because it's so sharp. Yada, yada, yada. Now, I've had a slightly different experience, and in all fairness, this is my second copy of this lens, and let there be no doubt, the optics truly are amazing. But there's just, there's just one thing, again, at least in my experience, that's keeping this Sigma from legend status. Now, if you're curious to know what that is, stick around and find out. So first up was the build, and like virtually every Sigma art lens before it, it's a beauty. It's chiseled like the timeless statue of a Greek god, and made out of materials that feel like they came from the interior of a Bentley automobile. The Sigma just reeks of class. The focus ring is massive, and it's literally the width of three fingers. It has a nice tactile and rubberized finish, and it moves rather free freely with a fair degree of resistance. Now personally, I'd like a little bit more resistance, but it's still silky smooth just the same. Now like the other lenses in the art line, the AF-MF switch clicks into place with a reassuring snap. The lens hood is also finely constructed, and it has a ribbed finish on the interior. The lens cap is Sigma's pinch type, and this thing covers a massive front element as the filter thread is a whopping 86 millimeters, which is rather uncommon, meaning that UV and circular polarizing filters are definitely gonna be on the pricey side. Now on the inside, there are 14 elements arranged in 12 groups, and there are nine rounded aperture blades for, for some very silky smooth and buttercream beauty to the background blur or the bokeh. Now speaking of the aperture, it ranges from f1.4 to f16. Now on the downside, this thing is a brick. No, literally, it's freaking heavy. In fact, it's the heaviest 85 millimeter lens that I've ever used or tested coming in at around 2.6 pounds. 2.6 pounds for an 85 millimeter lens. Wow. Now I guess that makes sense given all the glass that's in there. Then anyway, there's a rubber gasket at the base of the mount indicating some semblance of weather sealing or weather resistance, though I couldn't find anything specific in the literature that says this lens is in fact weather sealed. And at $1,199, you'd figure it would or should be. So all in, the Sigma 85 Art is a model of physical prowess, so long as you're willing to put up with the excessive weight. So for build, the Sigma gets a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> So next up is autofocus speed and accuracy. And in a word, maddening. Seriously maddening. As I mentioned previously, this is my second copy of the 85 Art. The first one focused so badly that I actually had to send it back. Fortunately, this one is considerably better, but it's still far from perfect. Now, I have the Sigma Dock, and I went through the focus calibration with, the, with a focusing chart at various focal distances, and I calibrated the Sigma accordingly, and thankfully, the Sigma Dock and the Sigma Optimization Pro software went a long, long way to make the lens focus considerably better. And I'm grateful that Sigma has given us this capability, but I'm also kind of stunned that both of my lenses, or both of my copies of this lens, were this far off straight out of the box. Now, if you've used the Sigma Optimization Pro software yourself, then you know there are four distance sections when you calibrate the 85. At close distances, this Sigma was actually deadly accurate. At the in-between distances, it was kind of like 50-50, and at or close to infinity focus, mine was a total train wreck. Fortunately, the Sigma Dock was able to help me correct the ridiculous front focusing that I was experiencing. And even after the calibration, the Sigma was still just a little bit inconsistent. Sigma has outfitted the 85R with their latest hypersonic motor, and it does, in fact, focus very, very quickly. But even in post-optimization software calibration mode, I found the Sigma 85R to be often unpredictable when it came to focusing accurately. 
Now, in Sigma's defense, this is the first A-line lens that I've used that's had any real significant focusing issues. Now, I did have some minor issues with the 18 to 35 art, but they were nothing like this. Anyway, even with the adjustments, focus misses were a bit more frequent than I would like, and probably a bit more frequent than I'm personally comfortable with at something as important as, say, a wedding. Though, I have used the 85 at a wedding, and thankfully, I've captured enough moments in focus that I was able to get away with it. Though, some of the results were still a little bit softer than I'd like, but instead of, instead of missing by this much, I was only missing by this much, meaning that the shots were still acceptably sharp. But it didn't always show off the stunning optical quality that I know this lens is capable of producing. And frankly, that's a shame, because based on the reviews that I've seen on YouTube and many of the reviews that I've read online, my experience with focus appears to be a bit of an outlier, as most of the other reviewers have not had these kinds of issues with focusing. And, you know, frankly, I'm, I'm kind of jealous because the optics of this thing are simply stunning. Now, again, the focus speed with the latest HSM motor that's included, it's more than adequate, especially for the bulk of situations that you're likely going to find yourself in with this lens. The focus accuracy, as mentioned, mm, not so much, again, based on my experience. So for AF speed and accuracy, the Sigma 85 gets a 7.5 out of 10. So next up is optical quality and the quality of the results. Many of the reviews online have stated that the Sigma 85 Art is on par with the Zeiss Otis 85mm f1.4, a $4,500 lens. And I honestly don't doubt that's true, if only I could get mine to hit accurate focus more frequently. Because when this lens does nail focus, the results are truly breathtaking. Truly, they are. But unfortunately, it's not happening often enough, and it gives me a strong sense of unease to want to take this thing to a wedding. Even with the dock calibration software, again, I want to make this clear, this is my second copy, and it's certainly better than the first, but it still misses focus just a bit too often. Many of the shots that I thought I had nailed ended up being soft, and in some cases they were so soft that I didn't dare deliver them to a client. One other minor downside is that the lens does exhibit some noticeable chromatic aberrations in very high contrast situations. Fortunately, that stuff is really easily fixable in Lightroom. But don't take my word for it, see for yourself. The next two to three minutes will be a series of stills and video clips taken with the 85mm f1.4 art series lens. And if I could fix the focus on this thing, it would remain permanently attached to one of my cameras.
So last up is value, and this is a tough one because on the one hand you have an optically amazing lens that's in the same league as the Zeiss Otis and the Canon 85mm f1.2L, and for considerably less money. It's also built like a tank and looks as elegant as a Rolex watch. But based on my two weirdly focusing AF copies of this lens, I think it's a bit too much of, bit too much of a coincidence with regard to focusing problems. We're talking some serious focusing issues. Granted, I was able to correct some of them with the Sigma Dock and the Optimization Pro software with the second copy, but even with those fixes, the lens still struggled with consistency with regard to focusing and focusing accurately. It was a really maddening and it was really maddening and frustrating to use because when the lens hits, as I've stated numerous times already, it's just incredible. Now in Sigma's defense, there are plenty of other photographers out there who have used, tested, and reviewed this lens and haven't experienced anywhere near the focusing problems that I've had. So take my experience with a grain of salt, but again, keep in mind, I'm basing that experience using two different copies of the lens. And if you're gonna go out there and dish out $1,199 for a lens, then it better focus accurately because up until now, my experience with the Global Vision line of lenses from Sigma is that these things just, in general, hit it out of the park. Now, assuming that most of the 85 arts out there will in fact focus accurately, then I'm gonna do something that I don't usually do, and I'm gonna give Sigma the benefit of the doubt here and assume that my experience was just a really bad coincidence because optically, the 85 art is significantly, significantly better than all the other 85s that I've used and tested in the past. So for value, the Sigma gets a nine out of 10. So to wrap up this review, we gave the Sigma 85mm f1.4 art series lens a 46 out of 50 and our highly recommended rating. The final word, Sigma continues to disrupt the photography industry with market leading optics at value prices with their global vision line of art lenses. And so it goes with the 85 art. It's an optical specimen, especially when it focuses accurately. And again, based on most of the reviews that I've seen and read, my experience appears to be a bit of an outlier because I had serious focusing issues with two different copies of this lens. Now, I want to believe this is all just some strange coincidence because I haven't had these issues with other art series lenses in the line. So let's hope Sigma isn't reverting to their pre-global vision state when there were numerous quality control problems, particularly with focus accuracy. I hope not. I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like these reviews, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, happy shooting.